The following program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company. you have probably in fact heard of a bat sweet spot. Have you ever thought about what that even means? I mean, how do you find a bat sweet spot? And why is it sweet? Do they use sugar? A sugar substitute? What is all this bat sweet spot stuff? What is that so many questions? A lot of questions. Sports figures Jackie Maloof is with Chipper Jones of the Atlanta Braves to give us the scoop. Would you ever get one of those ice cream headaches? Sometimes when you hit the ball, the, that, the vibrates like crazy and it hurts your hands. But sometimes, it doesn't hurt at all. And the ball goes much further. Why? I don't know. 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 I know, but I'm not telling. It's because of what is commonly called the sweet spot. That point on the bat where the ball just seems to fly off. It's right about here. Well, they don't call it sweet spot because of the way it tastes. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, will you join me in welcoming to Sports Figures, the Atlanta Braves 1996 All-Star third baseman Chipper Jones! Chipper? Chipper? So Chipper, what can you tell us about the sweet spot on a bat? Well, it's about uh, three inches of the bat right here, three or four inches right in the middle of the bat where when you hit it in those three or four inches, the ball really jumps off the bat well. Um, you know, if, if, uh, if you don't, then, then you know the ball doesn't travel nearly as far. It can hurt your hands, right? Yeah, I mean, obviously, when you hit the ball down here by the trademark or right here at the end, the bat breaks, and you'll be feeling it for a couple innings. Yeah. So why does one part of a bat work better than another? Well, because it's the sweet spot. Yeah, but why? Well, I don't know. It's just the <laughs> sweet spot. <laughs> why do we need to know why? Because knowing why is what people are all about. What's the first question a kid learns? Why? Think about what would happen if humankind never asked why. I wouldn't be eating the snow cone in the middle of July, that's for sure. Because nobody would have asked why water freezes and figured out the refrigerator. And I wouldn't be listening to this game on the radio. 
because nobody would have asked why electricity causes a magnetic field. And this stadium wouldn't even be here unless someone asked why about a whole bunch of things. Even the clothes I'm wearing are a result of someone asking why about something. So I think it's pretty obvious why we got to know why. Oh. So the question is, why does a baseball bat have a spot on it where hitting it makes it go farther? Why doesn't it hurt your hands? And why do bats sometimes break and sometimes not? The answer can be found in standing waves. Well, yes, that is a standing wave, but that's not what we're talking about. The kind of wave we're talking about is made by vibrations. <laughs> when you hit a ball with a bat, the bat vibrates and sets up what we call a standing wave in the bat. And we can take a look at what standing waves look like with a simple demonstration. Okay, we have Yvonne, and we have Mary Pat, and we have a telephone cord. Now, when Yvonne shakes the telephone cord, I said, when Yvonne shakes the telephone cord, come on, work with me, will you, Yvonne? Yvonne shaking the cord sets up a simple vibration in the cord. One end's going up and down, the other end doesn't move at all. Simple, right? But if we speed up the vibrations, we get a bunch of messy, chaotic vibrations, right? But if we have Yvonne shake the cord even faster, just watch what happens. See? As the vibration increases, the chaos forms a nice orderly shape that looks like a wave, a standing wave. We call that a mode. Now, in order to have a mode, you need a node. What's a node? This is. For all the movement in the cord, there's one place where there's hardly any movement at all. We call that a node. So there are nodes and there are modes. You can remember, no, duh, because there's no movement. No, duh. Now let's take a look at where these nodes occur. The first node is here, at Mary Pat. There has to be a node there because she's holding the cord. That's what we call a fixed point. Now the second node is about here, a little farther way down the cord. Jackie, my arm is getting tired. That's showbiz, kid. Now let's say I were to strike this phone cord like it was a guitar. If I strike it at just some random point, then we get those crazy vibrations like we had before. But if I strike it at the node, we get a nice orderly mode, and the node won't vibrate. That's very important. You got it? If we strike the node of a mode, that node will not vibrate. Right. Now, the medium that the vibrations are traveling through now is the telephone cord. But for Chipper Jones, the medium is... The bat. Yes! When the bat hits the ball, it vibrates, just like the cord. Only because it's wood, solid, the vibrations are so small that we can't see them. But we feel them. The first node is where we hold the bat, just like Mary Pat holding the cord, a fixed point. If we could vibrate the bat the same way we did the cord, we'd see another node form out here. That node is the sweet spot. Remember what we said before? If I strike a node, that point will not vibrate. No, duh! But if I strike at any other point other than the node, we get those crazy vibrations. <laughs> when the ball hits away from the node, it causes lots of vibration in the bat like this, and your hands have to absorb all of that. When the ball hits at the node, it sets up an orderly vibration like this, and there's no vibration at the node where you hit the ball or at the node where you hold the bat. Which is why your hands don't hurt. But there's more to it than just not hurting your hands. You're wasting energy. When you make a bat vibrate like that, you take up a lot of energy. But when you hit the node, all that energy goes into the ball, sending it way further. 
So that's why balls hit away from the sweet spot don't travel as far. Right, and that's also why bats break. Not because you're hitting them so hard, it's just because the vibrations are excessive and it's more than the wood can take. Now that we know why the sweet spot works, how do we find it? Well, I'll tell you. You take a ball and, and you can tap it along the end of a bat. And right here you can feel some vibration in your hand. But when you get down to the sweet spot, there's very little vibration and the ball jumps off really easy. Down here at the end, you also feel vibration and the ball doesn't jump off. It's fun. You know, we can also find it by using a mathematical formula. Where the node appears is the function of the medium frequency of the waves and the distance from the fixed point. But it's easier to do it this way. Yeah, but what happens if you have to find a node on someplace else, like an airplane wave? Ooh. What was that formula again? And finally, there's aluminum bat. Ever notice that the ball goes further when you use one? <laughs> Why is that? The aluminum bat sends the ball further for a couple of reasons. But the biggest one is, is that it's stiffer than wood. So, it doesn't vibrate as much. So, more energy goes into the ball. So, the ball goes further. Watch this. Of course, you have to hit the ball first. Peanuts? Peanuts? I'd like to thank the Atlanta Braves organization, Chipper Jones, Jason Schmidt, Thurman Brooks, Savalas, our students, Mary Pat, Yvonne, John, Austin, Jason, and the University of Georgia, Tony Cushenberry. And of course, let's thank Mom for helping us out today with how sweet it is. Good arm, Jackie. Way to focus. Let's take a few seconds to talk about speed. And velocity. Speed is the measure of how fast something is going. I just ran around the bases in one second. That's 360 feet per second, or 245 miles an hour. That's fast. But all this speed wouldn't do me any good if I ran this way. I ran fast, but in the wrong direction. Enter velocity. Velocity is the measure of motion that combines speed and direction. We call that a vector quantity something that has both magnitude and direction. <sighs> How much and which way? Running the bases, my speed stayed the same, but my velocity changed three times every time I turned at the base. So in order to score, you've got to have the correct velocity. <sighs> you get that last part? I think so. You forgot to carry the two. Hey, cut that out. <laughs> No paper, quit cheating. That's it for today on ESPN 2 Sports Figures. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. On ESPN 2 Sports Figures. Doink. <laughs> well, I guess we won't be needing this anymore. We're done. You want it back? All right. You can have this back now. Thanks for watching. Go. It's over. ESPN2 Sports Figures is presented commercial free for educators to record and use. Curriculum guides are available to help integrate sports figures into your classroom. For more information, call your local cable system or cable in the classroom at 1-800-743-5355. You can also access sports figures lesson plans by connecting to the ESPN Net Sports Zone at the internet address on your screen. ESPN2 Sports Figures makes math and physics a ball. The preceding program is part of Cable in the Classroom, a service of the cable television industry and your local cable company.